Your heart is beating right there for everyone to see. Not metaphorically, literally. Through your transparent belly, every predator can watch your lunch digesting and count your organs like items in a vending machine. Welcome to life as a glass frog, where privacy died before you were even born. You're hatching from a jelly egg sack that's been glued to the underside of a leaf, and the first thing you notice is that you're upside down, suspended over a stream full of fish that think you look delicious. Your dad's been squatting on you for two weeks straight, fighting off wasps and keeping you from drying out. He looks rough. His eyes have that thousand-yard stare of someone who hasn't eaten or moved properly in days. But hey, at least he stuck around, which is more than most frog dads do. You push through the gooey membrane of your egg, and gravity immediately becomes your first enemy. You're dangling by a thread of slime, and below you, the stream is churning with hungry mouths. One wrong wiggle and you're an appetizer. Your translucent body catches the filtered sunlight, making you glow like a tiny alien. No pressure, but if you mess up this first move, you're fish food. You let go and plop into the water below. Welcome to tadpole life, where you're basically a swimming stomach with a tail. The stream's full of hungry mouths, and you blend in about as well as a disco ball at a funeral. Every dragonfly nymph down here thinks you're on the menu, so you spend your days hiding under rocks and munching on algae. Thrilling stuff. Six weeks pass, and you've grown legs. Four of them, actually, which is great because you're about to need them. Your tail starts shrinking, your body transforms, and suddenly you've got the overwhelming urge to climb. The first attempt at leaving water is a disaster. You haul yourself onto a rock, but your new legs don't quite work in sync yet. You flop around like a drunk spider before sliding back into the stream. Take two goes better. You drag yourself out of the water and up the nearest tree trunk. Your sticky toe pads work like tiny suction cups, which is handy since you're heading straight up into the canopy. The bark feels rough against your delicate skin, and every few feet you have to stop and catch your breath. Who knew being amphibious was such a workout? By the time you reach the leaves, you're a proper glass frog. Well, sort of. You're about the size of a penny, and twice as fragile. Your belly's so transparent that anyone looking up can see your heart beating, your lunch digesting, and sometimes even count your bones. Real subtle camouflage there, nature. At least from above, your greenback helps you blend in with the leaves. You set up shop on the underside of a leaf near the stream. This is home now, and you'd better get comfortable because glass frogs don't exactly travel much. Night falls, and that's when things get interesting. You're nocturnal, which means while everyone else is sleeping, you're out here trying to make a living. Your first hunting attempts are pathetic. A fly buzzes past and you shoot out your tongue. Miss. A small spider crawls by, another miss. You're starting to think maybe you should have paid more attention when dad was around. Eventually, you nail a tiny gnat. Not exactly a feast, but everyone starts somewhere. Months go by, and you've gotten the hang of this hunting thing. Your tongue-eye coordination improves, and soon you're snatching up all sorts of small insects. Life's looking up until the rains come. Suddenly, every surface is slippery, prey is scarce, and bigger frogs are moving into your neighborhood. One night, a cat-eyed snake slithers past your leaf. You freeze, pressing yourself flat against the surface. Your transparent belly works against you here since the snake can literally see your heart racing. After what feels like hours, it moves on. Close call. You're about a year old now, and something strange is happening. You're feeling oddly motivated to make noise. Lots of noise. You find a good leaf overlooking the stream and start calling. Your whistle-like peep cuts through the night air. You're advertising yourself to any female within earshot, but you're also announcing your location to every predator in the area. Dating's rough when you're made of glass. Night after night, you peep your little heart out. Other males set up nearby, turning the whole area into a glass frog singles bar. The competition's fierce. The guy on the next leaf over has a deeper call than you. The one across the stream has a better territory. But you keep at it because what else are you going to do? After weeks of calling, a female finally shows up. She's checking out your leaf, inspecting your spot by the stream. This is it. Your big moment. She chooses you. Together, you mate right there on your leaf. Romance in the frog world moves fast. She lays about 30 eggs on the underside of the leaf and then takes off. Thanks for the memories, lady. Now you're a single dad with a clutch of eggs to protect. You position yourself over them. 
using your body as a shield. For the next two weeks, this is your life. No hunting, no moving, just you and your future kids. Wasps are your biggest nightmare. They love frog eggs, and they're not afraid of you. One shows up on day three, and you kick at it with your tiny legs. It flies away but comes back with friends. You spread yourself as wide as possible, trying to cover all the eggs. Your transparent belly actually helps here since you can see threats coming from below. Still, it's exhausting work. Some eggs near the edge start to dry out. You need to fix this fast. You back up to the stream, soak up water through your skin, then return to the eggs and release the moisture over them. You're basically a living water bottle. This goes on for days. Hydrate, protect, repeat. On day seven, disaster strikes. A heavy rain starts, and now you've got the opposite problem. The eggs are getting too wet, threatening to wash away. You huddle over them, using your body as an umbrella. Water streams off your back while you desperately try to shield your future offspring. The leaf sags under the weight of the rain, and you grip tighter with your toe pads. One wrong move and everything slides into the stream. A fly lands right next to you, but you can't risk leaving the eggs to catch it. Your stomach growls. Being a dad sucks. Finally, the tadpoles start hatching. One by one, they wiggle free and drop into the stream below. You watch them go with what might be pride if frogs could feel such things. Your job's done. You're free to go back to your regular life of hiding from snakes and eating bugs. Except you're exhausted, you've lost weight, and the good territories are all taken by frogs who weren't busy playing single parent. Years pass, and you've become a veteran of the canopy. You've survived snake attacks, wasp raids, and even a close encounter with a bat that mistook you for a midnight snack. Your calling spot by the stream has become prime real estate. Younger males try to muscle in, but you've learned a few tricks. A well-timed kick here, a strategic body slam there. You're not as spry as you used to be, but experience counts for something. You're on your fifth breeding season now. Same leaf, same stream, same routine. But this time, when the female shows up, she takes one look at you and moves on to the younger frog next door. Ouch. You call louder, trying to compensate, but your voice cracks. The equipment's not what it used to be. You manage to attract a female eventually, but the eggs she lays seem fewer than before. You guard them anyway because that's what you do. The tadpoles hatch and drop into the stream but you're tired. Really tired. It takes longer to recover this time. Your reflexes aren't as sharp. A spider you would have caught easily last year escapes. A snake you would have spotted immediately nearly gets you. Your transparent belly, once tight and clear, now looks a bit cloudy. Even your sticky toe pads don't grip quite like they used to. One night, you're sitting on your favorite leaf when a young male shows up. He starts calling right next to you. The audacity. You try to chase him off, but he's faster, stronger, and his call drowns out yours. By morning, he's claimed your spot. You move to a lesser leaf, but deep down, you know what this means. Your final season arrives, though you don't know it yet. You're slower, quieter, and spending more time just sitting still. Hunting's harder when your tongue doesn't snap out quite right. You miss more often than you hit. Your see-through belly now shows a body that's seen better days. Even the insects seem less afraid of you. One rainy night, you're perched on a leaf when you spot a particularly juicy beetle. You lean forward, tongue ready. But your worn toe pads finally give out. You slip, tumbling through the air. As you fall past leaves and branches, your transparent belly catches the moonlight one last time. You land with a tiny splat in the stream below. The current carries you away, while above, a young glass frog claims your empty leaf, ready to start the whole transparent circus all over again. At least the fish who find you will enjoy the meal. They can see exactly what they're getting, organs and all. Bon appetit, guys.